Hello, Ireland. I'm Sylvia Earle. I want to welcome you to the first Pharisees Conference in Cork City Hall on World Ocean Day, 2023. Your beautiful Emerald Isle sits like a jewel in the North Atlantic Ocean, and your enormous maritime area makes you the guardians of ocean giants, rare important soaring seabird colonies, this is a crucial time for communities around Ireland as legislation is being developed and finalized to create national marine protected area legislation. What I would love to see come out of this World Oceans Day in 2023 is to understand that more people have this love for the ocean and that there's a collective consciousness that's rising like the tides where people are understanding, loving, and, and seeking out more information about how we are truly intrinsically dependent on the ocean. And I think that's going to require lots of education. It's going to require exposure and access for people who haven't had it in the past. So the World Oceans Day here in Cork, the, all of us different stakeholders getting together is, is great in itself. And um, what I would like to see is that we have um, inspiration and renewed impetus to actually get on with all of the legislation, all of the policy making, all of the things we need to actually create a better maritime environment for everyone. Curious conversations where people from the cross-section of industries are willing to, to talk, to listen and to understand the challenges and find a place where we can all meet that means that we can make a difference. That's what I would love to see come out of this. The commitment Ireland has made to protect 30% of its waters by 2030 mirrors Ireland's outstanding leadership on environmental protection and in the efforts to solve the climate crisis. But now's the time to transform the words and pledges and promises into meaningful action. And now's the time because we're in the midst of the most decisive decade ever facing humanity. The actions we take now will determine whether or not we're going to leave our children and grandchildren with a livable future and whether we can preserve the lives of the millions of species that are at risk and that actually help support our planet's uh, thriving. The sea is a really interesting place, in my opinion. In many ways, I think, for people who aren't directly involved in this industry, it is a place of great misunderstanding and underappreciation. Oh, man, the sea, whenever I go to the coast, I just walk with one leg in the ocean and one leg on the soil is just magical. It's almost like it's spiritual. So, so that's one, but there is a practical reasons, right? I mean, people depend on the ocean a lot. We take about 100 million tons of fish out of the global ocean each year. That's huge. That's about taking 100 million mature cows in terms of weight, lots of food. But that also means the ecosystem, how are we treating it? Because that's massive, right? So it is both the practical and the spiritual that really inspires me about the ocean. You know, if we keep carrying on business as usual, we're just going to lose everything. It's bad for society as well, because local communities are suffering and they're not being able to benefit from the resources at their doorstep. So having a place that's fully protected, even however small, animals will grow bigger they'll flourish and they spill over into the other areas so that they perform as sort of a, a refuge and a safe haven and a, and a bank like for, for future generations. And this bank then, the interest rate is what goes out into the, the surrounding environment and people can benefit from. 
There were more discussions to be had. This was pretty big as far as I can see anyway, so the more the more the merrier really and the more involvement the more we're all sitting around the one table. We all have the same goal. You know, it's just how to address it and, and minimise the pain as, as as we do go forward. And if, if fishermen are convinced that there is actually a gain, they they will take the bit of the, the bit of pain. But there has to be, you know, there has to be discussion, there has to be trust, there has to be transparency. Bring all those together at an event like today and you should have a buy in, yeah. Yeah. I think we obviously we come down to support the whole projects and support our teams. You know, we are we are Fair Seas. You know, Fair Seas is a coalition of NGOs. I've been quite sceptical. You know, it's it's quite a hard thing to pull off. I don't want to hear the same old. I want to be challenged. I want to be um, find new ideas. And I want to hear good experiences. So I've been very pleasantly surprised. I must admit. So it's been a very positive experience. It's quite a large uh, area, even at the moment, the Ire Ireland's uh, exclusive economic zone is an area, a landmass that's much greater than it is of our landmass and stuff like that. So it, it comes a challenge of coverage. Uh, there's probably uh, no end to the amount of kind of ships and aircraft and technology that we would need to monitor that area. So it quite, can be quite challenging. And I think maybe there's an awful lot more information and knowledge, especially about the role that the oceans has in protecting our climate and, our, and our, basically our life on, on the planet. Yeah, so. I, I would I would hope that uh, as time goes on, you know, people place more kind of emphasis on it and shine into the future. Yeah. Ireland is committed to take action to protect and restore our ocean through the work of both at home and abroad, and our progress is accelerating. There's no doubt in my mind that we still have much to do when it comes to the protection of our coastal and marine environment. And the new bill will not only broaden the protection for species and habitats, but will also allow us to focus on ecosystems that play particularly important roles in climate regulation. Working together, we are fellow travellers in Ireland's exciting journey to address biodiversity loss in our seas and our ocean, to tackle climate change, to protect, conserve and to restore our marine environment. In many ways, it is a journey of pioneers as we look to overcome challenges, to balance so many interests and to listen to so many voices along the way. Our destination in this journey is a brighter future for all, for our economy and for society, for nature and for climate, for people and the planet. Fair Seas are looking for 30% um, of Ireland's waters to be designated as a marine protected area. And marine protected areas are specific areas of our sea that we protect to a higher level than other parts that we protect species in there, habitats, ecosystem processes, all these things that create the ecosystem, that create the environment, that are important for, not just for biodiversity, but are important for livelihoods, for, um, for people's coastal communities, for people's mental health. You know, healthy seas, basically, is the, is the grander goal of, of fair seas and like a sustainable, healthy ocean. And I think I often refer to it as a healthy, happy ocean. And I think a lot of people understand what I mean when I say that. If we think about healthy seas, we think about when, what's a healthy sea. A healthy sea is a he healthy marine ecosystem and healthy communities. So we're allowing ourselves the opportunity to thrive economically and socially within our planetary boundaries. And I believe we can do that by 2030. Marine protected areas are vital. Uh, if fisheries management alone worked, then we wouldn't have seen peak global fishing in 1996. So global catches have just been declining over the past 25 years. So if fisheries management on their own were going to work, it would have worked by now. So clearly something else needs to happen. So marine protected areas are a proven tool that can return amazing benefits for fishermen and for nature. And uh, the science shows that if you fully close an area to fishing, that it will, after a number of years, it'll have on average six times more fish inside the fully closed area than in an adjacent fished area. So it's an absolutely vital tool for healthy oceans. Fisheries management on its own is not enough. I absolutely do have hope. Um, and I think the remarkable thing about the ocean and the sea and, and where you do manage it sustainably, it can recover and recover quite quickly. And then you know, recover to stages that are beneficial for everyone. So I absolutely do have hope. I do, I mean, the, the thing is, the planet is gonna exist with or without us. And, you know, that's what we're all talking about is that how can we maintain the best life we can have for our species, our people, while protecting the, the nature and the environment. 
The science paints a kind of a damning picture about what the state is at the moment, but it also gives us all the tools we know. We know what we need to do, we know where we need to do it, we know exactly how much of what to do. And if we do that, we can actually see changes. And there's lots of examples all over the world where it's, you know, the proof is there. We just need to scale this up and we need to refocus how we think about the environment and what we're doing. It's not the 50s or 60s anymore, it's like 2020s. If we start making our choices that we make as a life about nature as well, we'll start seeing changes. Not only can it be achieved, it has to be achieved. Our job is to end poverty on a livable planet. We can't end poverty with an unhealthy ocean. We can only live in a world without poverty in a world with a healthy ocean. And so it's absolutely important. And constituencies like Fair Seas, who brings together lots of different shareholders who are all invested in finding a solution around Ireland, we're exactly what we want to see in places. Lots of voices at the table having a very active discussion about what does the ocean mean to them and how together do we all bring back the ocean to a healthy state. I'd like to see my future secured anyway, you know, and um, I believe from what I've seen today, MPAs are certainly part of that process. We can, you know, include them with management and what have you, and uh, that's what healthy seas look like. Yes, I very much have hope that we can make sustainable um, oceans happen. I think the tide is turning. I think that, you know, the younger generation now is so much more engaged in uh, the marine environment, in the climate, and it's them who are the future leaders, and it's them who are going to, are uh, starting to hold the rest of us to account, really, and make sure that we protect the oceans so that they have it into the future for, for their lives and then their children and their children after that. Well, I mean, it's really important for us to get uh, our 30 by 30 marine protected areas by 2030 and to have 10% strictly protected areas because our, our seas in Ireland are, are not in good shape. We know that there's declining fish stocks. We have seabirds um, that are in trouble. 23 out of 24 of Ireland's breeding seabird species are in trouble. But now, yeah, the, the, the campaign for MPAs is really important. I always have hope. I think hope is one of the strongest things that we have and we have to latch on to that. Um, I do think that it will be fraught with difficulty, but I think that if we keep that hope alive and most importantly work together, we can face any challenge that comes about us. So yeah, hope's very important. We are at the very start of our journey here in Ireland. We don't even have legislation, so we have to begin the designation and management process now. I think there's a magic in bringing people together when people get to spend time together, they have a morning coffee, they have a quick chat, they catch up later and they talk about what they've, what they've heard. Um, I think it builds connections. We're a small community. It's vital that we're a united community as we go forward together to ensure we do the best job we can for Ireland.